Uh, one old poem from my first book and then uh, finish up with more recent stuff in the past couple of years. This, uh, I like to start with this poem because it relaxes me, which is always a good thing to do right at the beginning of a reading. And this poem's called In Bus Darkness, and I wrote it actually in 1988. <clears throat> it would have been September 1983, and I would have been 19 then, in college, in love with a girl who went to school in Minnesota, and on a bus on my way to visit her. I was in love then, in a way not possible now. I, now, am not possible in love that way. In the bus darkness, my reading lamp alone showed the smoke we had exhaled. And the man across the aisle who wanted to tell me about Jesus wouldn't let me read my poetry book. <laughs> 23 now, riding a late night bus to Minnesota in March this time, on a six week assignment from work, I am caught up with the spring break travelings of today's college students. I've been watching the brown haired girl read a sociology textbook for four hours now. I have been in love with her for three. I watch a part of her knee which is visible through a hole in her jeans. I watch as she turns to look at me from time to time, as if she knows I'm thinking about her. I watch as she reads, as she turns the pages with her pretty young hands. I love her. I want to talk to her. I will never know her name. And when I finished this poem, I already knew she had gotten off the bus at midnight at the stop in Eau Claire. She turns out her reading lamp now and plunges us all still further into the quiet reflectiveness of bus darkness. We are all getting tired now. One by one, our halos disappear. Okay. This is called You Falling. I say be careful, you're too close and reach out my arm as your body turns towards the open window, falling first forward, then down, as you utter a barely audible, oh, I cannot watch but see you plunging five stories to the end of the nightmare. I loved you, so I needed to keep you falling. This will wake you back up. This is called Special Place in Hell. <laughs> The subtitle I haven't figured out yet, but it's called Ode to Resistentialism, which I can't even pronounce. There's a special place in hell for people who overstuff napkin and paper towel dispensers so you can't pull out just one. <laughs> Instead, you must tear furiously at chunks of 10 or 20 sheets just to get enough to wipe your hands. It's a global issue. And I blame the stuffers, not the engineers, as the devices work just fine when properly filled. But what about the engineers? I blame them for vacuum cleaner cords that should slack and uncoil gracefully as I hoover, but instead they go taut, the plug drop into the floor with a thud when I move away from the wall socket. These sound like small things, but I argue that added up across life they are larger than heart attack, divorce, or cancer, whose inevitability is easier to accept. It's the small annoyances that kill men slowly that kick you when you're down. So be grateful next time a napkin comes easily when you pull. Cumulus. Saturday. We're spending the day at the municipal pool. All body types are represented, from nubile teenage girls to old men in speedos with more body confidence than I had at 21. 11.30 a.m., the clouds roll in. I watch a cloud assume the shape of the face of a young woman, which morphs into Chewbacca, before dissolving into something unrecognizable the moment I turn away. Sometimes I think if I just keep looking, we can keep all this. This one's called a sepia image, and it's uh, after Ted Kuzer, if you know him. This is actually one that I, I kind of touched up after a workshop here at Oxford, so I, I owe it to uh, Karen Bavine for helping me with the, just a little tweak here. Chicago, 1906. School children skip around a maypole, the sky speckled gray. Twelve girls in white dresses and a boy run clockwise, ribbon, ribbons held fast in small hands. 
lives full lived years before I find their photo on the internet printed to frame atop my piano. You want to say that this was a moment frozen in time, yet here they are, these children of the last century, moving in the schoolyard, winding ribbon around ribbon, laughing, and frozen has nothing to do with it. Thanks. So it's called Super Blood Wolf Moon. Monday morning before sunrise, the Super Blood Wolf Moon showed its ruddy face. Together we gazed at the sky and the frigid air, you shivering in the new nightgown that hangs so well on you, its sheer fabric, the embroidered trim of flowers about the neck. It wasn't a drapenid outburst or Henry's Comet. It wasn't even a full solar eclipse like two summers back. But it was a super blood wolf moon and I'll be damned if your nightgown didn't shimmer in it. How am I doing on our time? Do I have time for one more? Yeah, two minutes left. Two minutes. I'll just take one of them if I can find it. I'm gonna close with this one, because I'm from Finland and all, and I have a poem about Finland. This is called Consider Suomi. Suomi is the Finnish word for Finland. So you learned something, if nothing else tonight. I moved to Finland, and if you were surprised, well, so was I. Will I rue the decision someday? Perhaps I may. I admire Finnish precision, but sometimes I miss the American way, which is just to say, Let's throw this against the wall and see if it sticks. <laughs> but now that my welfare is provided by the government, I don't need to worry about retirement. So let's have a beer and raise a toast to Finland, my new home. And if you also must roam, consider Suomi. It's really quite homey. <laughs> Thank you.